Hello Knockouts, Tanya TKO here and this is part two. So if you haven't seen part one, make sure that you go back and watch that before watching this one or you can watch this one and then go back and watch that one, however you want to do it. But we're going to be talking about dating interculturally as a black person. I don't really know how to start this video so I'm just going to jump into it. I'm a self-love specialist and relationship expert from TanyaTKO.com. I help you learn to love yourself and each other. In the last video we were talking about some of the cultural differences that I realized from going to an African party and how it just really changed my whole perspective. So let's jump, so let's jump right into it, right? Okay. I really don't know how to begin, but we we're running out. We have limited time, so let's let's just talk. Okay. I am the product of an intercultural relationship. This is something that I I just realized this week while we're talking about all oh, the protector, provider, this, that, they don't want to be this, they don't want to be that, et cetera, et cetera. And I realized just this week, my mother didn't marry a black American man. She didn't. My mother married a man who protected, provided, like that man was like, when he's remem remembered, he doesn't want to be remembered for being a provider. Listen, my father is still alive. I love my father very much. When I think about, when I think about my father, I think about how even on the toughest of times, he did what it is that he needed to do to make sure that we were taken care of. And when my mother died, listen, when my mother died, my father was there for us as head of household and our parental figure holding down the mantle of that household. <laughs> I'm sorry, and even to this day, like if you guys watch the displacement for the dream diaries that I did, my father found out that I was in trouble, but he didn't tell me. But he organized things behind the scenes to make sure that I was taken care of. So my mother, like, you know, that's a vague statement, but I'll say that I had some, I had some bills, right, that were far greater than what it is that I would have been able to handle even with the GoFundMe money. And my father organized and orchestrated things behind the scenes to make sure that I was taken care of even though I didn't know that that is what he was doing. That's what my father did for me. My father, my mother did not marry a black American man. My mother married a man. So it's like when I sit up here and I talk and I talk about how I came from a two parent household. Part of the reason that I came from a two parent household is because my mother made decisions to make sure that she settled down with a man who had a greater likelihood of being there for his children, whether or not she was in the picture. Cause like I said, my mother died. And my father still held up the mantle of parenthood in that household. So let's move on. Okay. Sorry, that just makes me emotional because I, I just... I'm so lucky. I'm so lucky because things could have been so different. And you know, there's so much brokenness inside of our community. But ladies, it's really not up to us to have to be the only people on the front lines trying to fix this. There's a lot of brokenness that happens when you can't trust your counterpart. So let's talk about, let's talk about, let's talk about the difference that I've realized. Because like I said, I, I read that article and it just, it clicked for me. Because I've never deliberately, it's like, like somebody asked me when I, when I, cause I do these surveys to, to, um, to get topic ideas for the upcoming week. And somebody wanted me to talk about F boys. And I don't, I, I don't have much experience with F boys because I've never gotten along with them. They come, I've met them, but they just, they just, they gravitate out of my life. I just, there's no, it's like, and when I think about the difference between a few black American men whom I have tried to date, because it never really got very far, and the men from Nigeria or Ghana, listen, my father is from an island called Nevis. And Nevis was inhabited by Igbo slaves. They took Igbo slaves over there and they, they, 
they use this the Igbo slaves to to do the sugar cane and all that other stuff right so there's a part of me that feels like genetically I may be Igbo I know that a lot of Nigerian men have found me attractive and I'm attracted to Nigerian men like just just physically some ladies some of them are fine so listen anyway so I'm gonna say this we have a few more minutes for the video one of the the, the differences that I've noticed is that there's just there's this clash that exists with this whole I don't want to be a man I don't I don't want to be a provider I don't want this I want to act stupid I want to see if I could F and leave if I could pump and dump and all this other stuff just foolishness however in the relationships with the first of all all other cultures except for here in black America all other cultures it's already a given Listen, if a man is going out there looking for a woman, if a woman is going out there looking for a man, he needs to come with some money because even these broke, these, these builder bums, when they have daughters, they're not going to want their daughters getting with some builder bum. They're going to want the best for their baby girl, but they go out there and they meet you and they don't care about the best for somebody else's baby girl. So let's talk. So let's talk. Let's talk. Like I have, I've, I've never had any issues with any 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 of the Nigerian men that I've ever dated ever being with this whole I don't want to be a protagonist never first of all some of them have some you want to talk about money like some of my best experiences have been ah just you want to talk about being spoiled and just Ah, being treated like a princess, like really being treated like you're valuable and you're you're worth worthwhile and worthy, just amazing. However, this is one of the things that I'm going to say to to you. If you're a Black American woman and you've been raised around Black American men, and they haven't really stepped up and and been the men that they need to be there's some brokenness that exists inside of you from not being able to trust your counterparts and when dealing with men of other cultures there's you know when we talk about submitting right being submissive etc I personally believe because even as strong as you see me here I personally believe that it's the natural way of women to quote unquote submit or I wish I could think of a better word relinquish release release unto her man i believe that there's just an intrinsic part of us that wants to but when you can't trust your counterpart there's a part of you that can't so you're like remember when we talked in that video where that girl was cussing her out and i cussing that man out and i was like black american women get into this space where they're like my clit is bigger than your penis and and i'm just like I see it's all unfurling. So even though I'm getting in, I got into that ridiculous debate with this man. So I've grown from it. So let's talk. So ladies, you're going to have to do some healing inside of yourself. Let me just tell this story real quick about King Cobras. Like I saw this, this, this geographic special where King Cobras were mating. First of all, I didn't even realize that there were female King Cobras, but yes, they're female King Cobras. And if you look at them mating, you would think that she's trying to kill him because she's like, <laughs> like really going for the jugular. She's like trying to F this, this, this snake up, right? And part of the reason that she does that is because she needs to know that the man that she's with is a fighter and can protect her. Because you can't protect a woman if she can beat you up. You can't protect her if she can, if, 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 if her force outmighties yours. So as a black American woman, you know, I can understand why there's this King Cobra mentality where they're like, you're not going to, you, I'm going to, because I think that it's a defense mechanism where we're like, you know what? Well, I really need you to step up to the mantle of manhood, but I have to test you first. And so as I leave this video, I would say, listen, no, you cannot submit to just any man. But find the right man who has a track record and is responsible enough and worthy of your relinquishing or releasing to him. Because there can't be two captains of the ship. And as a woman, your feminine energy will be depleted. Let him do the stuff that he is good at. And you rest in your femininity. It helps flourish for the whole family. But there's a brokenness that exists in Black America that you're going to have to fix inside of yourself to be able to relinquish and release to a man who is capable. I want to hear your comments below, okay? Tanya TKO, and I am out.
Peace.